Jason, you good? Everybody good? Okay, it is four o'clock. We'll go ahead and call the uh, special meeting of March 30th, 2015 to order with the roll call, please. Mayor Householder. Here. Commissioner Blanchard. Here. Commissioner Crawford. Here. Commissioner Davis. Here. Commissioner Hardy. Here. At this time, all who are available, if you could please stand and join me with the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. I didn't notice anything on public uh, comment here. I don't know if on special meetings we don't normally, but is there, I'll just ask if there's anyone here who has anything that's not on today's agenda they'd like to bring before the city commission at all? Anything they want to mention? Okay, great. We'll just move on into uh, administration. Item 3.1, consider purchase of one 26-inch walk-behind self-propelled concrete road saw with trailer. Mr. Franz. Uh, Mayor and Commissioners, thank you. This was a carryover from the previous meeting. Uh, we did uh, uh, revisit the issue. Uh, one of the questions asked was how old the existing unit was, and I just realized that I didn't answer that in the blue sheet. Uh, it was purchased in 1997, okay. so it is, I believe that's 18 years now. Um, uh, we did check around uh, uh, with a number of, of different vendors, uh, both with respect to purchase price and with respect to uh, uh, leasing. Uh, I've, I've shared those results with you, I think, with regard to the purchase price, uh, bearing in mind that the prices you get off the internet aren't necessarily in bid environments, so they're, they're going to be a little bit, uh, you know, well, who knows. Uh, uh, but nonetheless, uh, the, the pricing we have, uh, considering it's including a trailer, I think is uh, certainly a fair price. Um, we did look at rental options. Uh, rentals uh, for, the, for a, a comparable unit will range from uh, probably fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a month. Um, we did get a few prices that were a little bit lower than that. There's one there for fourteen hundred, and subsequent to preparation of the blue sheet, we did find another one for twelve hundred. But those are smaller units uh, uh, with less uh, uh, less horsepower and less capability. Although the vendor swore they'd run a twenty-six inch blade. Um, some of the other vendors thought that 59 horsepower was undersized. So, you know, uh, uh, anyway, the, the bottom line is our feeling that the bid unit, given a price of 15 years and given the fact that we have, or a life of 15 years, and the fact that we have uh, uh, easy accessibility to it 12 months out of the year uh, is, is the option to pursue um, the, uh, annualized cost is about $1,920 a month uh, for the unit uh, and actually the uh, maintenance and bid replacement on it comes in at considerable more than that. The cost of ownership is about $9,200 a year counting the blades. Um, anyway, I guess I would stand for questions. We have Jim Toy Chair from the uh, Public Works Department to uh, uh, address anything that I might not be able to address. Okay, thank you, sir. And I know more about pavement saws than I ever thought I would <laughs> ever need to know. Okay. <laughs> Any questions for staff on this? <clears throat> I, the only thing I would ask is that I know we, I mean, we're not to bog this thing down anymore and go any further. Uh, maybe it's a question for Mr. Toich. Um, this three speed gearbox, um, you, you mentioned that some of the people had said that the 59 horsepower may be a little light. Mm -hmm. Do we do we risk wearing? I mean, obviously the other one lasts us 18 years. Do we yeah. risk wearing this one out? Do, is there an advantage uh, for the three speed uh, unit? Yeah, uh, you know the, the the three speed simply allows us to adjust the blade speed for the size of the blade. So if you put a larger blade on it, or you get into tougher material. And as uh, Mr. Toich is pointing out to me, some of our streets will be layers of concrete, asphalt, and brick. And when you have multiple materials like that, apparently it is, it is hard on these units because there are different hardnesses. And the, every time you hit, a, hit an interface, the, 
blade wants to uh, uh, seize or whatever, you can adjust the speed of the blade to match the material. It's there. Uh, either in <coughs> thickness or, or, or composition. And so that three-speed gearbox, is, I think, is a pretty important component mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. of the unit. If we get a single-speed unit, then I would, I would say we, we probably would be looking at more horsepower if we want to run a larger blade. Okay, so yeah, just making uh, sure that's that's what we yeah, yeah. because I, I, I the single like the single speed just didn't make any sense down there with some of the others. So yeah, okay, great, fantastic, appreciate the information on that. He's, Anyone else? He's darn impressive. <laughs> I'm telling you what, just throw anything at him. I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm surprised you're not wearing a hard hat. Yeah, uh, yeah well, <laughs> maybe maybe next week. There you uh, go. <laughs> Anyone from the public here to comment on this uh, pressing issue? No. Okay. Bring it back to the commission for possible action then. Mr. Mayor, I move that we authorize purchase of a walk-behind self-propelled 26-inch pavement saw and trailer from McConnell and Associate at a price of $28,806. Second. second. Motion is second to uh, purchase the 26 walk-behind uh, pavement saw. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That motion carries 5-0. That takes us on to 3-2. Item 3.2, conclusion of the 2014 evaluation of city manager's performance and periodic review of city manager's base salary. This should be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Thank Ms. You. Fisher. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. City Legal Council notified staff that the governing body concluded its annual review of the city manager and performance and um, had asked that staff prepare this item in anticipation that the governing body wish to take action on the city manager's base salary. City employees generally are eligible um, and they were in 2014 as well as 2015 for a merit-based increase in base salary up to 3 percent effective on respective employment anniversary dates and dependent upon the results of performance evaluations. The governing body has advised staff of its intent to award the city manager with an increase of 3%. Um, the last adjustment to that base salary was January 2014. Um, as noted in the report, um, the consultant that did our last pay plan did include the city manager position into our um, executive staff pay plan and under that structure, um, it is included in there, but as the contract section 3C also reads, periodic reviews shall be conducted with any adjustments to base salary based upon such criteria and the approach taken by other cities um, in comparison to whether or not city managers are included in that same salary structure or handled purely contract only varies. Um, we did find that more than half were doing it outside of, but you know, it's, it's just a matter of preference. Um, okay, the matters of the evaluation of the city, manager per, city manager's performance and the determination, bear with me just one second here. I lost my screen. And city manager's base salary are strictly within the purview and discretion of the governing body. Therefore, staff makes no recommendation to the governing body. Um, if you choose to award, I would um, ask that you may do so by approving a motion similar to what is included in your blue sheet. And I won't read that to you um, unless you wish I do that, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for staff? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Fisher. Thank you. Do we want to hear from the accused? I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. I guess it's a public uh, item. Anyone here to comment on this matter? No. Yeah, you're safe. <laughs> okay. I'll bring you back to the Commissioner of Possible Action. Mr. Mayor, I move that the city manager position be removed from the senior executive management pay plan and that the city manager be awarded a merit-based increase in base salary of 3% retroactive to January 1, 2015, and that the human resources director take such actions as are necessary to implement the change. Second. 
Motion is second to uh, the stated motion. <laughs> I won't read it again for you. Uh, any further discussion on this? I have a comment that I'd, uh, that I'd like to make just oh. in, uh, <clears throat> in support of the motion, and that is, is just to recognize uh, the city manager for uh, his work over the last year that led to this evaluation. And uh, I did personally give it a high evaluation, and I felt that uh, a number of things contributed to that, and, that, and some of those were um, increased um, level of responsibility in, in, in the effort to stand up an economic development organization and all the uh, additional uh, pieces that had to be put together for that and, and the work that you did on that. And then also just uh, continuing to um, guide, help to guide the commission in some of the, um, in, in our policy and, and implementing policy decisions that we've made um, that I think, uh, some of which I think are, are bearing fruit uh, today. Um, not only economic development wise, but uh, primarily community development wise. So I appreciate all the hard work that you've put in over the last year and, and thank you for that. In addition to guiding the commission, I think that Mr. Gage also is very responsive to the commission when we have questions or items that we like to have researched or implemented. And um, he's, he's <coughs> always been um, very uh, open and, and, uh, and helpful in that regard as well. Anyone else? I, well, since we have the opportunity, I, I, I've certainly been in the unique position of having been new to the uh, commission and certainly made the transition seamless. And uh, I'm very impressed the way the, the city administration and department heads uh, keep us prepared and well informed. So I, if we had glasses, I'd say cheers, but since we <laughs> don't, <laughs> it's a job well done. <laughs> Okay, you want to throw anything out? We're not putting you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> they already took my answers, man. Oh. <laughs> I'll refer to that. <laughs> uh, Jason was great to work for when I was on city staff and, and just is, is great as far as uh, working us through all the policy decisions we have to make and looking up and researching things for us, and I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, Ethi would, ethics, uh, high ethics is very, very important in city and county government. Yeah. Yeah, I would just uh, echo a little bit more of, of uh, what Dr. Davis was saying, and that's I've always looked at city staff as a reflection of their management team, and 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 I, and I although you guys didn't get the raises today as, as well, but I put all our city <laughs> management uh, into that, and I think uh, how excellent our city, uh, uh, all, all our employees are across the board is a great reflection, and uh, uh, on 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 Jason's abilities, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to do something with their uh, amounts next year too and in, in our in our budget as well and uh, uh, and has definitely made uh, staff has definitely made my job a lot easier you know uh, uh, with everything that they bring to us and like I said very responsive with any questions we have or policies or that's uh, uh, it's been great so I think we're all uh, that that's looking for a unanimous so with that motion all in favor aye, aye. All opposed? That motion carries 5-0. That takes us to 3-3. Three, three. Uh, commissioners, real quick before you do that, I just want to uh, show my appreciation and tell you thank you very much. I, I uh, enjoy working for you. Uh, I enjoy working with our staff, and uh, they get a lot of credit because they make my job a lot easier. And I enjoy being a part of what we are doing in, our, in this community to make it better for business people and for residents. I, I enjoy that a lot. I always have. And uh, like I said, if, as long as I'm uh, able to help do that and, and be effective, I'll be here as long as you'd like me to and uh, and uh, continue to enjoy and, and get things done for you. And if not, then you need to send me down the road. So that's the way it works. <laughs> We've got Thank too you. many big projects going right now right. to do that. <laughs> a little job security right now on this next item. I think we'll hammer that home. Yes. And I, I also yeah. think that Mike should, we should also uh, thank Mike because he's a great deputy city manager. There you go. Thank you. Even I get my then reflect Jason in your and I'm, I'm page equally it. satisfied. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Item 3.3, resolution numbers 15-7192 and 15-7193, establishing the dates and times of public hearings for consideration of a request to form a tax increment financing district district and a star bond district generally described as being located in downtown Salina. Mr. Scrake. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, as the item description noted, the only action item for, on, for your consideration today is just setting the dates and times of that hearing. Um, 
there are a number of steps in this process that, which I'll try to describe. And I want to start by acknowledging that tax increment financing and star bond financing can be confusing. And then to compound the issue, uh, Bond Council had a couple rounds of revisions over the weekend to the resolution. So you have more paperwork at your desk than, than you received last week, and I'll try to be sure to take it slow and, and cover all the bases. So I, I believe you're all aware of uh, kind of the activity and the momentum that's been building. It's been recently reported in the newspaper and there was a public hearing at the community theater about a lot of private sector interest in, in uh, investing in the downtown. And there's been a lot of ideas floating around and they're not all on the list that I provided in, in the blue sheet. But you've had extensive conversations about a field house and, and that's been before you for consideration. There's been discussion of redevelopment of the Lee buildings into apartments using low housing tax increment financing, which you have endorsed uh, with a resolution of support. Um, there's been discussion of construction of a downtown hotel with restaurant and conference space. Uh, by Lighthouse Properties, which is a local uh, company. And there's also been discussing, discussions of development of a private family entertainment center, bowling alley, and, and other activities. And then, as you know, the Sable Lot grocery store is nearing completion. So there's been a lot of discussion about how much momentum that's generated and, and interest in taking advantage of that. And so, as I noted in the report, those projects represent an exceptional commitment of private investment and resources in the downtown, something that you don't see very often and, and it probably represents quite an opportunity. So much so that uh, Salina 2020 Inc. has uh, been incorporated. It's a, a group of local businessmen and, and individuals that are wanting to take the lead and help move the, uh, th this project along. <clears throat> and it's been recognized that the timing and the breadth of the private and public investments in the downtown could create an opportunity that we want to leverage through the use of tax increment financing, star bonds, and possibly even community improvement district financing. I attached a summary of some of those items, but I'll try to give you a, a nuts and bolts description of each. As you may already know, tax increment financing is a means where the base increment, um, what the taxes that are being paid, let's say today, are, are preserved as a base amount that go to the taxing entities. Then any improved value and improve, uh, increased property taxes generated by a project can be captured and reallocated for use for eligible um, project expenses. So that's kind of the starting point. TIF is property tax and sales tax base, but it is local. And so it captures the local increment. Star bonds add to TIF by capturing the state sales tax increment, which can be sizable since the the largest portion of the sales tax is the state sales tax increment. So um, those are the fundamentals of both and the Save-A-Lot project represents an opportunity since it's nearing completion and getting ready to generate uh, sales tax increment. Forming the district at this time would set the base, would, would establish the base essentially at zero or very near zero for Save-A-Lot and then be able to capture the state and local sales tax in the Star Bond project. So having said that, um, the request that's before you today is to pass the attached resolution setting May 18th as the public hearing date to consider formation of TIF and Star Bond districts. And as further detailed in the application by 2020 Inc. Uh, and it, it goes into um, more detail in terms of the project. Passage of the attached resolutions would not commit the city to the creation of either district or the provision of any pi public financing at this point, nor would the city be required to take final action at the time of the public hearing. So state statute specifies that from the date of passing the resolution, a minimum of 30 days and a maximum of 70 days are the time frame in which the public hearing has to be set. The proposed date represents 50 days um, from, from today. And within 10 days of, of, the, of passage, we would have to send notice to each property owner as well as each tenant in the downtown district. And we've been working with uh, the consultants for 2020 Inc. that have provided background information on the tenants and staff is prepared to, uh, to meet that deadline. Uh, both star bonds and TIF bonds involve reallocation as I described. And one thing that I should note that, it, that I didn't have in, the, in my staff report is on the TIF bond, star bonds, uh, star bond financing requires the issuance of bonds. TIF financing does not. And a possibility would be pay as you go where the uh, developers of the project could just capture the increment on an ongoing basis rather than bond finance up front. Um, so consequently, during the life of the approved project, the property taxes and, and sales taxes that would typically be paid to each uh, taxing entity are redirected to fund the eligible project costs. 
And as I noted, star bonds include the sales tax as well as the property tax, and they also include the um, state sales tax. The other thing of note is 20 mills for the school district and one and a half mills for the state are preserved from that reallocation. So as, as we get into the math and, and the financial projections, that'll have to be factored in. Um, at this point, there have been informal discussions amongst uh, people that are aware of the project and, and, and the vision with uh, possibly Saline County elected officials and, and school board uh, officials, but nothing formal, nothing uh, concrete. In fact, one of the things that we wanted to note is if, if you pass the resolutions today, one of the first items that we'll need to address is, is meeting with uh, those entities and getting them up to speed and sharing with them how the process works and what the vision is. Um, I noted in, the, um, in the, the staff report that both the county and the school district essentially have veto authority over um, STAR and TIF projects. In fact, I reported that they, we needed their consent. It, that is not the case. It's presumed unless they truly take action to uh, veto the project. So part of the discussion that we'll have is, is explaining the project and, and trying to answer any questions that they might have. At this point, the, there's a lot of vision, there's been a lot of conversation, but in the intervening 50 days, there's going to need to be quite a bit of work to uh, solidify the vision and, and get uh, refined details in terms of sources and uses of funds, cost estimates, feasibility, uh, reporting, that type of thing. In my report, I referred to the term as a project plan would be refined, but actually the project plan is, is a term of art that you will be adopting um, at another step in the process. So just to clarify, there will, there will be refinement of uh, the, pro the, the details, uh, including project elements, development costs, property tax and sales tax, increment modeling, project phasing, financial feasibility, but actual presentation, consideration and approval of a project plan by you would occur at a later step in the process. Um, <clears throat> I also noted that there, there has been discussion with and there will need to be additional discussion with the Department of Commerce. For star bonds, it requires a finding of eligibility from the Department of Commerce to be approved and be able to proceed with star bonds. Um, the date that the district is created, as I noted, it becomes important since that sets the base and then that's what the increment is calculated off of. And that date is based off of uh, forming the district, assuming that we get a finding of eligibility from the Department of Commerce and if, assuming at a future date you um, create the districts, that then sets the base for the purposes of calculating the star bond increment. Um, so I noted kind of the next steps, assuming Department of Commerce issuance of a finding of el eligibility, uh, you would then be asked to vote to create the star bond district and the TIF district. Um, you could postpone the public hearing and request additional information, or you could propose modifications to the proposed district. Um, and you could also vote to deny the formation of one or both of those. And as I said in the report, it should be noted that creation of the district is not the final step or authorization. Within a year of creation of the district for star bonds, um, the project plan has to be approved. There is no deadline for <laughs> approval of the TIF uh, project plan. So you could form the district, still be working on the TIF plan in excess of a year if, if that came to be. Um, I, personally, I found it, um, I don't know, uh, reassuring maybe uh, to compare this project against the conformance with our strategic plan. I think I removed one item from our strategic plan that didn't apply. Um, it, it's very much in conformance with our goal to be exciting, uh, to live in and thriving economically and socially, being clean, attractive and inviting, having quality of life for residents and visitors, being attractive and well maintained, having high community standards, having a downtown Salina that's thriving and vibrant, uh, Salina being respectful of its heritage and, and uh, throughout Salina, the adaptive reuse of historic and architecturally significant buildings and encouraging and supporting economic expansion and market-driven tax-based growth. So I, I'm, I'm not aware of anything that, that is hit on as many strategic plan items as this one might have, or uh, might. Um, so the items before you, in, well, in terms of a fiscal note, at this point, the only cost that would be associated with you um, approving the setting of a, of a hearing date would be the mailing that's associated with mailing to all the uh, property owners and tenants. And we still need to refine that list, but that is a sizable mailing, um, and probably between 1,500 and 2,000 certified mailings that will have to go out. Uh, but that would be the only expense that would be associated with this action. Um, before I get to the, the recommendations and, and items for your consideration, I do want to walk you through uh, the changes that took place over the weekend in terms of the resolution. And I would tell you that I really don't think they're substantive, but 
I just want to be sure to walk you through them. So you should have in your packet uh, a, a new resolution 157192, and you should also have a red line. It, it's not actually in red, but red line copy of that same resolution. And so in that red line version, there'll be a tick mark in the margin showing wherever there was a change. On the first page, it's all formatting, returns, and spacing, and things like that. On the second page in section two, uh, the word initially was inserted. So it now reads that the proposed Starbond project district, in parentheses, the Starbond project district, would be initially comprised of one project area. Similarly, in section three, it was reworded to say the project Starbond project district provides for initially a single Starbond project within the Starbond project district described in a general manner as follows. Um, the other changes were related to uh, inserting the date and um, uh, referencing exhibits A and B, which are the map and the legal description. So that's the extent of the changes on the uh, first resolution. You should also then have the second resolution, which is 7193. And uh, it has very similar changes in terms of formatting and spacing. And uh, I apologize, I'm having technical problems as well. Um, it also inserted language about initially and there it is. Um, in section two, it had a very similar insertion of initially. In section three, it had identical wording in terms of um, referencing initially and, and the project being described generally in a manner as follows. And then it also had insertions of dates and exhibits. So. Um, as I said, I don't, I don't think any of those were substantive to, to you or me, but they seem to be important to bond council. So um, with that, the actions for your consideration are that you could approve, vote to approve resolutions 157192 and 157193 as uh, presented, establishing the date and time of public hearings for consideration of a request for tax increment financing and a star bond district. You could approve the resolutions with an alternate public hearing date and establishing an alternate date and time. You could po postpone consideration of the resolutions to a specified date, or you could choose not to approve the resolutions, there no thereby denying the request to set the public hearing date. And I do know we have an, a number of people in the audience that are with Salina 2020, Inc., and I think they would welcome the opportunity to speak to you and, and speak about the project more specifically than I have. Great. Any questions for staff before we do that at all? As far as setting the date, uh, no, does the date of the opening of the grocery store affect its inclusion into it no it could still be included it would just be the, the more time we allow to elapse would mean that the base would would grow and the increment would shrink essentially <coughs> just a quick question about the the change on here to initially and just couple of questions about flexibility. It kind of seems like that allows <laughs> for some flexibility. Um, as far as the, uh, on the size of the district, is it, if it needs to be changed, the boundaries, can it both be expanded and it can reduced or can you, can you only go one way? And due to the notice requirements, it could contract, but it couldn't expand without okay. having to do this process over. And then as far as the establishing the date for May 18th, is that something that is also, if it's, if it's ready to go prior to May 18th, um, are we still within that 30 to 90 day window? Can we move that up? Or since we published May 18th, right. doesn't have, it can be no earlier than that. Unless we want to send 2,000 letters yeah, again. Okay. Huh? We, <laughs> we need to stick and, and with May don't. 18th. <coughs> and uh, and don't. With respect to the initially, um, the, the project plan is when the, the final details will be locked in. So I think the reason for the initially was to acknowledge the fact that you'll have the hearing, um, you'll, you'll form the districts, and then there'll be a time frame to consider the project. And, and then ultimately at the end of that process is when you would approve the plan and, and make a commitment to go forward with TIF and STAR. So if it goes beyond May 18th, we can... Yeah, you could post. You can open it. the meeting on the right. 18th and then extend yes. it. If you could, need yeah, to. you can continue your public hearing if you need be, and you're not. Well, well, if you're satisfied with the information, there's certainly been expectation on the 18th to uh, establish the district. You don't have to do it on that date. You could do it at a later date. Right. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for staff at all? Uh, I guess I just want for the listening public um, to 
I, I was just wondering what the district would be or what would be included and it looks to me like it runs from ninth to front and north to south is that correct um, is that right or not to south street that. to it would be um north street it's elm on the north and south on the south Okay. And, well, and commissioners, as, as, as you know, and, and what we'll do is, is as we go along, we'll, we'll uh, probably, we need to work on this, but set a, a site, an area of our web page where we can put uh, important information as we go. But at this point, the district boundaries that are recommended, it's not a perfect rectangle, so keep that in mind. But, um, you know, as you've, you've heard, the, you've mentioned the north and south boundaries. Mm -hmm. On the west side, uh, there's a portion that's along 7th Street, and there is some portion that does get uh, over to 8th Street, just to give yeah. you an idea, but it's not a perfect line, so it's a little mm -hmm. hard to describe verbally. There have been a, a few that attended the community theater um, meeting the other night with me that have just wondered what, who was, what was going to be included in that district, so that helps. Historically, would there be any reason why someone in that district would not want to be included? I'm not. You know, I, I, it's hard for me to speak as to why they wouldn't want to be included at this point. Um, well, as we, as as the the pieces of this uh, become more clear, uh, as we get closer to establishing the district, and more particularly when we, if that's done, when we start looking at a project plan that has to be uh, put together within a year of forming the district, there's always something that could affect an individual business owner differently and they might not feel like it's beneficial to them but generally speaking the the what 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 this is intending to do as Mike mentioned is take the increased increment in tax dollars and apply it to uh, public infrastructure that complements the development the private development and the private investment that creates the increment in the first place and so from that perspective when you look at the entire area the we believe and I think every, those that have proposed this and everyone or at least most everyone so far that's looked at it are comfortable with the thought that it's it's intended to strengthen the entire downtown and, and quite honestly the community as a whole but certainly focused in the downtown area but I, I would say that as we go along, it would not, it would be almost nearly impossible statistically for someone not to say, I don't like it for a particular reason or I don't think it benefits me. And as that comes up, our, our, our job will be to sit down and, and speak with them and try to understand their concerns and see if we can resolve them. Just a quick, quick comment and, and question that you guys can maybe address, and that is, is that um, we've talked a little bit about overlaps and in incentives. And maybe just to, because this is part of neighborhood revitalization area. And so is that, will that be taken care of during the 50-day process? Will we have something and maybe need to do, have another action in, a, in association with this to identify those conflicts? Yeah, commissioners, as you know, there are, there are various tools that are out there. We have, as we mentioned here, the Star Bond District, the Tax Increment Finance District. There are, there are community improvement districts. There's the neighborhood revitalization area, uh, possibly even transient guest tax. Um, there's some other tools we haven't mentioned that at some point may or may not be considered, but uh, there are various tools. And the idea is to use them the best we can to complement what we need to do in the downtown. But when you deal with specific districts and are dealing with the same increment, we'll have to make a call on that issue. And so, uh, as you know, the, the uh, TIF district deals with both local, uh, local taxing jurisdictions and their sales, and sales tax that would go to them from retail entities and also property taxes. The neighborhood revitalization area deals with property taxes. So one of the uh, tasks for a bond council is to, by the time we set up the district, is to remedy and see how those two can either work together or how they may have to be looked at completely independent of each other, and if so, what action needs to be taken uh, to address that. Because as you know, uh, we have multiple, I think we counted 19, uh, neighborhood Revitalization Act, the NRA projects within this area. So we have to be sure and honor those commitments without question and yet still do the other things in the downtown we want to do. And we have a sales tax reimbursement agreement with the uh, uh, new grocery store as well. So we want to obviously be able to honor that in some way and also be able to do the other things we want to do. So that's uh, our bond council's helping us work on that question. Okay. I've had a lot of questions when the grocery store is going to open. <laughs> Does anybody know? As early in April as possible, I think. I, I think it's that they're still working hard, but uh, I think that's what they're trying to do. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Well, uh, some maybe a representative or something from 2020. Does that seem like the best place to start? Is that? 
or several. It's, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, a lot of information. It's fine. Name and address. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the commission, Don Boos, uh, 2532 Angus Lane, Salina. Uh, we don't have a formal presentation tonight. That would be planned for the public hearing on the 18th. Um, but we were here primarily to uh, indicate, um, you know, our, our interest in, in moving this project forward. A lot of work has been uh, going on um, here since about, oh gosh, July, I think is when we started. Uh, in fact, the consultants here from Buffalo, New York, uh, we were with him yesterday. He's in town today. He's meeting with some of the constituents right now and, and tomorrow, uh, working on underwriting all the feasibility to make all this happen. Um, We've uh, been very excited about all of the, the excitement and support we found uh, within the, uh, the city, within the business community, and city staff's been really terrific to work with. This is um, kind of unparalleled in my career to have everybody working together towards a common goal with an alignment of interests and nobody feeling like anybody's working against anybody. And uh, what we had explained to most of the people that we've uh, spoke with, at least at this point, creating the district in and of itself doesn't commit anyone to anything. You know, as we move forward, should the Department of Commerce uh, find the uh, finding of eligibility and should uh, uh, the, the city see fit to, to move forward and, the, and then the project plan be, be uh, created, well then you'll start to see some shovels in the ground maybe a year from now. But again, it's a long road, uh, but we're excited to move forward and we have a lot of uh, people here in the community, a lot of the business community, um, working very hard to try and create something very special for Salina. Great, thanks. Do you have any questions? Yes. Yeah. I have a question. I was at the community theater meeting and uh, there was a question, I, I'm not sure if it was answered or not, and that relates to the, uh, the level of um, whatever that base level of uh, assessed value is that you determine your tax increment financing from. And I was just curious, is that frozen for the life of the financing district for 15 years or whatever it is? Well, I know on the, the star bonds, that's a 20-year period. A 20-year period. Uh, now, in the TIF district, that's different. Uh, so we'd, of course, defer to bond council and, and other council. But uh, I believe that historically I've seen those 20, 25 years in other communities. But, yeah, but I think well, that would be part of the ordinance. Whatever that number is, is that, let's say if it comes out to be $10 million, say, is that ten million frozen then, and all of the money above the ten million is used for other infrastructure, or is there some um, level of increase through time of that ten million dollars? Well, again, I'm not uh, counsel, but my understanding is that the the assessed value and appraised value may vary, but that it's dollar driven. Uh, and so the amount of dollars of the of the previous 12 months, which I'm assuming in this case would be calendar year 2014, those dollars would be frozen. Now, as the ad valorem value increases, again that that increment comes back to the to the TIF district for um, TIF allowable expenses that are um, horizontal infrastructure, streets, sewer, water, parking. Uh, and then perhaps for some vertical in, uh, well, I guess I'm not Parking sure the TIF can be used on the museum pieces. Um, that would be more star bond. Okay. And um, I, I, I think the, um, the field house is being relied upon fairly heavily to um, produce enough um, I don't know, out of town revenue or whatever that, that, that portion is. And I was wondering, do you have any kind of level of um, confidence that that will be the case? The uh, consultants here from Buffalo who's trying to determine that now, or at least he's in the early stages of that, um, but it's not just the, the field house. The field house is a, certainly a large component. The star bond piece um, has a large uh, uh, qualification in tourism. I believe 30% uh, of the visitors have to come from 100 miles away, 20% from out of state. The out of state's the difficult portion when you're located in the, in the middle of the state. That was his first comment uh, last evening. That was his first comment this morning. It was his first <laughs> comment at noon today that remember we're in the middle of the state. But we do have the luxury right now of the Stiefel Theater where we know that 70% of their um, uh, ticket sales are from outside of the area and they have outstanding records that they were able to help, uh, help us with. Uh, Rolling Hills, even though it's outside the 
the city limits, had 85,000 visitors last year, and they had detailed uh, information by state, by zip code. They help us meet some of that criteria. Uh, he's now getting into some of the, the deeper areas you know, outside of the proposed field house. It, it turns out that the, the entertainment center that uh, we're hoping to get in actually has a lot of tourism also uh, with uh, uh, bowling tournaments. Um, but they're also examining the, um, the, the tourism that's related to Kansas Wesleyan and then the, the relatively new medical tourism because we found out that 43% of the patients at the hospital are from out of the area. So you add all of those together and it, and it does appear to be feasible. He's relatively encouraged at this point, but it'll be a few weeks before we uh, get that uh, final uh, study, which I'm sure will be circulated uh, to, the, to the state and to the, to the city. And, in fact, I think I believe Jason's meeting, meeting with the consultant in the morning. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you had a question or thoughts? Sounds like lots of hard work. That's the thing. Oh, there's a lot of work. <laughs> well, uh, as, as Trace said, uh, uh, we're in the easy phases right now. We're just doing the talking. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. as the uh, feasibility and the analysis starts, that's when the hard work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone else from the organization at all? Do you have anything prepared that they want or no? Nope. Okay, anyone from the public care to speak on this uh, issue at all? Matter? No? Okay, bring it back to the commission for possible action if we have no other questions. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve resolutions 15-7192 and 15-7193, establishing the... I think we need them separate motions. Yeah, we're going to separate, separate motions, yeah. Okay. But move to approve resolution 15-7192 to establish the date and time of the public hearing for consideration of a request to form a tax increment financing district on May 18, 2015 at 4 p.m. Second. Motion is second to adopt resolution 15-7192. Any further discussion? Yeah, it's quick, just a quick question before we go on both of those for staff. And that is, is that as part of this, you had mentioned um, and I wrote up both sides of my paper here, so give me a second. Um, we had said we're going to need two mailings on this prior to the 18th, and the, the estimated cost on that, roughly, just a rough cost on that, and then, and then the question that goes along with it, if you, if you don't have that, is are, are the motions here that we're passing also authorizing the, that appropriation, or is that done administratively? That's a good question. From a pure purchasing perspective, anything less than $20,000, I have the authorization on your behalf to purchase. So you wouldn't have to officially, I think it's going to be less than right. 20, the estimates about. Yes. Uh, actually, it, it's one mailing to two groups, the property owners as well as the tenants. And my initial estimate is around 2,000 mailings. But as we cull through that list, I think it should come down. But the rough estimate's about $7,500. Okay, so that'll be handled through our administrative. And yeah. then <clears throat> any rough idea on staff time? I mean, there, there, is a, there is a fiscal component to that, sort of, but is it? Well, it'll take quite a bit of time. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure I can give you the number of hours, but that's a huge okay. mailing. One of the challenges being in the downtown area is that it has so many properties and so many owners and so many tenants versus if it were a, a piece of just a single piece of property with a single owner developer it's a lot easier to deal with from that perspective but uh, it's just a challenge of being in, in a downtown but you know it so it'll take time with volume there's okay. no question I don't know how much but we'll have focus pretty hard because we have to get all that out by that deadline okay but uh, my, my kind of my questions kind of lead almost to that this is a this is a pretty significant uh, in my opinion at least from staff and and some of this allocation of funds um, I think it's a fairly significant vote of confidence for the ability to get this done uh, because it's not it's not just a couple hundred dollars and and let's go on our way so um, I'm completely supportive of that I think that we've got good partners and and uh, I think to um, fulfill and this is probably ma mainly to my colleagues up here is that I, I just feel like you know we've got the shared vision we've got the strategic plan we've got the comp mm -hmm. plan and and I think that this is just a really good investment on our part to uh, to move the move this process forward with uh, this group agreed well said. 
Okay. Any further discussion on that? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? That motion carries 5 0. And Mr. Mayor, move approval of resolution 15 7193, establishing the date and time of a public hearing for consideration of a request to form a star bond district as May 18, 2015 at 4 p.m. Second. Motion is second to approve 15-7193. Any further discussion on this? I'm so excited I can hardly stay seated. There you go. <laughs> well, we'll take a restroom break before the next <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I would, I would say, I mean, I don't want to just, I mean, what John said is perfectly fine, but I, I think just like you said, hitting on all the, 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 the conformance with strategic plans, I mean, all of those things, what did you say, you removed one item? Yeah, I think you so. You know when you're sitting up here, and this has been a project, I think, of, of mine for four years, and I know it's been a shared vision up here with, with, with this commission. It's very obvious when things are right because the stars just sort of, the star bonds, if you will, <laughs> seem to align. <laughs> and everything comes down and happens for a reason. And hopefully, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, people will say, well, of course it had to go this way. It looked like everything just fed in. It will look easy 20 years from now. <laughs> people will hopefully look back and realize the investment that, 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 the, that the group has made and, and some of the some of the tough decisions that had to be made uh, early on to uh, to make this happen. But I, I think it's the thing that, that I had somebody corner me today at one of my meetings, this uh, older gentleman who owns some property downtown uh, that recently sold and said, this is something Salinas needed to do for 35, he goes, heck, to 70 years. He said, this is something that's been needed for a long time. And that attending that meeting the other night uh, and seeing so many people uh, come out. I mean, I think we, you guys were expecting 25, 40 people, something. And there's, I thought, close to 300. So somebody said 200 and some, whatever. But, but informed people. I mean, I looked around and saw familiar faces with, with the city. I mean, from all different walks of, of the community. Everybody's supportive. I have yet to hear a negative word about this at all. And it just, you just, it, things just feel right and, and it just is, is happening everything is happening for a reason I'm not a mystical person but I, I sometimes that just something's in the air that that happens and I think uh, I think this is what we've all uh, hopefully been kind of working for and 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 maybe even bigger things to come I mean we think this is big now there there could be more there could be so much more attached to this so if nobody else has anything I'll okay all in favor aye, aye. All opposed? That motion carries 5-0. That takes us on to other business. Is there any other business before our other business? Okay. I move to recess into executive session for 45 minutes to discuss legal with legal counsel matters subject to the attorney-client privilege for the reason that public discussion of those matters would waive the privilege and adversely affect the city's interest in the matters and to discuss matters pertaining to the acquisition <coughs> Uh, real estate for the reason that public discussion of the matter would adversely affect the city's position in relation to the acquisition of real estate and reconvene at uh, 5.30. Second. Work? Okay. That's a long one. <laughs> okay. Do we anticipate any business after this? Commissioners, I, I don't know that we anticipate a formal vote on anything, but there is a possibility that you could have a discussion. That'll be up to you. Okay. Uh, so I just want to say that for those that are here, if they really want to wait that long, you just know there's a possibility. <laughs> so uh, I wouldn't want to say no for sure, and then we have that, and you know, people have gone home. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? We're in executive session. Six thirty. Six thirty. Ah, cool. Got the old umpire up here. You ready to get back into that? Oh, yeah. Could, uh, you know what? I'd never get out of the crowd. I was say, so Travis will get you signed up. I'm sure they. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I still have the equipment. I just probably don't have the eyes. Well. <laughs> Some would argue you, you didn't have eyes back then. Yeah, I was. I, I was a referee back then. I was blind then too. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. I think we're almost back in session. Almost. Almost. Give a second here. Okay, bring us back into session. Uh, okay. Our executive. 
We're on. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make, uh, make a follow-up in, in some regard to the uh, statements that I made last week concerning uh, potential conflicts of interest and, and uh, what I deemed at the time I, I felt necessary, adding additional uh, APA and AICP uh, guidelines to uh, govern and help our boards uh, recognize and, and, and disclose conflicts of interest when they arise. And to that effect, um, and uh, at that time I had mentioned that I was interested in um, looking for clarifications of those conflicts and, and um, what uh, we've done as a board, and, and you guys can correct me if I'm, if I'm stepping off or, or staff can, is um, I believe that we uh, want to direct uh, city council to investigate the potential uh, conflicts and to clarify um, those steps through the process um, I believe outlined in the state uh, commission on uh, ethics uh, procedure which I believe in, in involves and includes um, getting letters of opinion uh, from from that board um, to establish uh, whether or not, in their opinion, uh, conflicts occurred. So what we've done as a board is direct the uh, council to take those steps in the normal course of, of his duties here. We don't want to um, move it to the front of the line or slow it down or anything like that. We're just in the normal course of business to investigate and that get back, get back to us on that so that we can uh, further craft the necessary language uh, to go into those further resolutions. Um, I don't know if I missed anything on that or if that seems to... Does that get you where you... We need a consensus of any kind or... Yeah, I think you should try to obtain consensus on okay. that. Since, okay. it's an invest, since it's an action-oriented type Okay, item. that's something we're all in agreement it's, with. Yeah. Is that... Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Sure. Okay, is there anything else uh, you need from us? Well, let's see if there's... <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anything else? Nope, okay. We're good. Any other business at all? Nope. Motion okay. to adjourn. Second. Motion to second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That motion carries 5 0.